Enoch 46. So I'm not going to talk about Enoch 46 in this video, but I just want to put it out there that I've just read Enoch 46. <clears throat> and my head begins to spin even more about, ironically enough, the spinning time loop thing. There's something going on with time, with Noah. This book was written in the days of Noah, wasn't it? And Enoch 46 is talking about Jesus and the elect being selected before the foundations of the earth. And it's just, wow. I wanted to talk in this video again about Freemasonry and just how, how deep this goes. Um, now, you, you might be out there thinking, you know, I'm a little, I'm getting a little bit obsessed with the enemy and Freemasonry. I need to get my eyes on the prize. And no, no, no. I'm doing both. All I'm doing is observing the Freemasons and doing videos about it, but I'm not studying them. I'm not, I'm not, I've got no interest in what their hand signs are. I mean, be, be good to know because this big one they do with the pyramid, the, the Adolf Hitler, Donald Trump, Carter Combine one. It's quite the favourite of them, and the one that the Freemasons do in the ISS, where they grab their arm, <clears throat> they grab their arm. That 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 seems to be something, or rather, that seems to be a significant one as well. So I, I, I see that a lot. And I just want to convey a few stories that, just a few testimonies here that that that, that have just happened to me. So I did that last video. I did that last video about about what happened to me yesterday, and I went inside. I've had my cuppa. And it's now about probably about two hours later. So all of that happened in the, in the what I said in the previous video the, this morning and yesterday. And, and, and this morning I've just walked in and I've seen just where I have my coffee, where I get where I get my coffee. Um, the staff in there are lovely. There's there's this one fella. He's a he's a larger fella and he's only a young bloke and he 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 pulls the coffees and what a sensational bloke. Like he he just. He, he 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 was out of the shop there before, and he's walking around the centre, and he just he 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 went to lengths to make eye contact with me, and we we just looked at each other and smiled, you know, and it was just you know just really nice. He's a nice young kid, but anyway, he um he served me my coffee, but while I was waiting, there was there's, there's this little kiosk store behind. I really wanted to take some photos, but I thought, oh no 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 no, we won't do that because of what I'm about to say in part. And there's other reasons. There's people's privacy and all that as well. But anyway, this lady, they're called Oz, Oz Education. Oz Education. And, and I had a bit of a look on their website after I saw this, but she's there and she's talking to, but well, basically what they do, they appear to be some sort of maybe a, I'll have a good look on Google when I get home, but I've had a look at a couple of photos there and you can see them up there now that it's backing up what I say. They're Freemasonic, this mob. So when I walk past, when I was waiting for my coffee, she's right there, and she's doing that big pyramid one, the, the Donald Trump, Adolf Hitler, Carter Conlon one. And I'm like, seriously? Like, she's talking to somebody, and as she's talking to this person, she's doing this Masonic hand sign. And I just stared at her hands. I just stared at her, mate. Just stared at him. And then I looked at her, and she just looked at me, and she was quite startled when she saw me, and... And um, <laughs> I had that effect on most women. No, 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 no. I think it was. I think it was because um, it was definitely because um, that she just knew I was onto her. Anyway, after that, I sat down and had my coffee, and I started reading Enoch. And after I'd finished my coffee, and I, I, I got up, I, I had a look at her, and she was. She was just sitting there on her own, and she's sitting there doing. She's sitting there doing Masonic hand signs. She's just sitting there by herself. I'm like, that's interesting. And I just, by now, I just sort of, I just, I was just staring at her, you know, staring at her. And she was really uncomfortable. And I thought, oh, well, I better stop. I better stop because these Freemasons do rule the world. And all she has to do is make a phone call and I'll get arrested. And because all the policemen are Freemasons and they're all in it together and so I thought I better stop, and the Lord told me to stop as well. He says, "Brett, you've made your point, mate. You've made your point. 
I've worked through you again, the Lord said. Praise be to Jesus, man. Whoa. Then I walked past the jeweler. And the jeweler's serving somebody, and she's doing the ones they do on the ISS. She's like holding her forearm while she's serving this person. Now, this is all after. So I hadn't relayed this story in the video I did this morning because I was going to do... I was going to do a video later today about just this bloke talking about this bloke at the gym and just a story about my my days as a little boy in church. So I didn't I didn't do the video this morning about this, but I saw this before the video this morning. Now there's a there's a personal trainer in the gym in here and we've had a we've had a colorful past me and this fella. Um so I come back home in May last year. So what's that? That's coming up. It's around about, wow, it's 10 months now since I got back from Brisbane. And I, I, so, and when I work out, I just want to be left alone. I'm generally in and out within an hour. I just know exactly what I've got to do. If somebody's on my piece of equipment and it's my, and, and, and it's that, it's, I need to use that piece of equipment. It's that time in my workout, you know. Um, I, and somebody's on it, I just move on to the next piece of machinery and I just, and if I can't get on that piece of machinery, I improvise and I just do another, you know, another, another exercise for the same body part for the same movement, you know. Anyway, um, that's how I roll. I just, I don't give anybody any sort of hint, clue that idea that I, you know, want to be spoken to while I'm at the gym. Anyway, there was this one day when I was, I was, um, this, this goes, what I'm talking about now, this goes to what I feel could be the spiritual battle happening. Um, I've got, a, I've got two scriptures really, apart from me, not 46, I've got two scriptures really, really pulsating in my ears this morning, guys. That's Ephesians 6, 13, um, very well known scripture. And I've, I've never really understood it till this morning, Ephesians 6, 13. Um, and Matthew 24, 24, it's been ringing in my ears for about a week now. But anyway, this guy, um, this day, he was, um, I was just doing a, just a floor exercise for my abs, you know, I probably shouldn't work on my abs, I think those days are long gone, but anyway, um, <laughs> no, no, you've still got to stay strong. Um, but I was, I was doing this exercise for my abs one day and, and, and I, I was, I had my headphones in and. And I'd been trained at the gym for a couple of months, and I again, I, I gave, I give no nobody any sort of idea, thought that 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 I want to be spoken to while I'm at the gym. But anyway, he, he halfway through my set, halfway through my set, this bloke, this personal trainer who's a big beefcake guy, guy you know, his name's Josh Cotter. Turns out. And I, I, um, I, I was just doing, I was just, and, and, and he, he's a big, big, you know, he's a personal trainer. He's, you know, he's fit. He's, he's a good looking guy and he's very, very popular in the gym. Always got a client, always got a client. Now, remember what I've said in previous videos, all that stuff the Lord showed me while I was watching the racing car at my brother's there the other day. If you've got any sort of business that's successful, you're a Freemason. Now, they've got a Snap Fitness franchise in at Tugra, Westfield. It's never overly busy. It's a good gym. It's a good gym. I like it because it's it's not busy. They've got all the gear there, and you know it's good. Um, but it's snap fits the Tugra, so to you've got to be a Freemason, or your money has to have come from Freemasonry. If you're an offspring of a Freemason, and you're you have to be in cahoots. Jimmy Barnes and his son, they all seem to, I don't know, they all seem to pass it down, which sort of goes to the point of this video. I'll try and keep this story short, but anyway, we clashed big time because he interrupted me mid-set and asked me to move, and I just blew up. You know, this is like, I hadn't been saved yet. It was probably around about the same time I was saved there last year, but even if I was saved, I, that, that sort of period between June when I was saved and when I was born again at Christmas there, I was still very, very angry, you know very angry man very frustrated because i knew all this truth nobody wanted to know and i just felt really isolated in the world i had no answer you know and i was really really trying to find jesus at the time and i just couldn't find him i couldn't find him and and i was quite frustrated i, I just i blew up you know he, i said well i said mate i said what's the story i said i'm, I'm mid-set and i said you, you, you you're interrupting me one and, and two i'm the customer and you're telling me to move i said i was here first 
And he's like, no, he said, if you take any notice of what I'm doing, he says, you'll know that I was here first. I said, well, no, mate, I don't take any notice of what you're doing. I couldn't give a rat's ass what you're doing, to be honest. I've always found personal trainers to be arrogant, holier than thou, better than you. They own the gym. Everybody loves them. You will respect me. And if you're like that, I will not respect you. And I'll do everything in my power to reject you, you know. And I, I just, I've never had, I've never spoken to this guy before, but I just thought, no, no, mate, no, no, you know. But anyway, it, it, it blew up. And I, I sort of, I, I got all logical bread out, logical bread out, you know, which means I just argued with him with logic. And I grabbed hold of his little machine that he was telling me that I was in his way. I said, mate, I said, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. And I'm shouting across the gym. Well, not shouting. I'm talking to him across the gym at this point because I'm holding this this piece of machinery, you know. And anyway, the conversation basically ended with him saying, mate, he says you've got the whole gym to do that. I'm like, oh, righto. Anyway, I walk up to the franchisee, this lady named Chantel. I Googled it this morning, this Snap Fitness, just in prep for this video. Her name's Chantel. She, she comes across as a lovely lady. She's always been nice to me. I've got no, I've got no animosity towards Chantel. She comes across as a really lovely lady, but you just wonder, you, she has to be a Freemason. She has to be getting her money from Freemason. She, she just must be. You know, because she's got this bloke who's, and this is where I'm going, this bloke's a Freemason. I mean, you have a look at these, this pose, this is what, this pose on this picture, this is what, this is what sparked my interest. So this is, this is his, this is his, um, his photo on the wall here at the, at the gym. To me, it's a Freemason pose. I, I really, I really, um, um, like veered in on the photo this, this morning. I made the photo really big and I tried to do the sign that he's doing. And to me, it takes a bit of work. It's not just a natural pose you do when you're taking a photo. It's, it's Freemasonic, this pose. So this bike, this bike's a Freemason. And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> this is really interesting. So <clears throat> this morning, well, there was another incident about two months ago. There's another incident where he came up to me and I was using a piece of equipment and he come up to me and he keeps in, in that first argument. He, he said to me at one point, he said, mate, he says, y y you need to show some gym, gym etiquette. He says, I've been in gyms for 10 years now. 10 years now I've been in gyms. He'd be about 30, this bike. 10 years now I've been in gyms and he says it's etiquette it's etiquette that you that, that you ask each other to move and I said well mate I said I've been in gyms 20 I said I lost 25 kilos when I was 26 and I said never once have I had a personal trainer ask me to move and never once has anybody personal trainer or otherwise talked to me in the middle of a set so I must have missed that memo you know that's sort of how that first conversation went and anyway, the second conversation, I basically, he, he come up to me and he says that I was doing the, the lap pull down one where you pull down the bar, you know, and I was one set away, I dumped two sets and I, I had one set to go. And as I say, I'm in and out of the gym and this bloke sees me. He's, I'm there all the time and every time I'm here, he's there, he's there and he's watching me, this bloke. As he comes up to me about, oh, about a month ago, I reckon it was, probably about a month, he comes up to me and he goes... I was, I was half, I was, I was bit between sets. He didn't interrupt me mid set this time, but I was, I was between sets and he, and he come up to me and he says, do you mind if we jump in? Because he had a client with him. Do you mind if we jump in and we share? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, mate. I said, I do mind. I said, I'm using this piece of equipment. And I said, uh, I was once given some counsel by a personal trainer that I had the whole gym. I had the whole gym to do this. And he just looked at me and went, uh, you know, like, like, like this, you know, there's far more to the story that I told, but if I told the whole story, the video would go on and on, you know, um, but anyway, he, um, and that's how that, that little part ended. But anyway, I was, I was training there last week about the time when the Lord really started to open my eyes about these Freemasons and I was working out and I saw this photo of him on the wall and I went, he's a Freemason, look out. So then I Googled him this morning and I found this other photo, this one up here now. I found this other photo. I'm like, all right, okay, okay. And you look at his profile and all the things they're talking about. It's about, you know, life in the flesh. It's about being pretty. It's about, you know, feeling good from within, self, self, you know, um, self elevation. And, you know, you don't need any help from the Lord. And I'm like, all right, I see what you're pushing, mate. I see it. I see it. Excuse me, he's there this morning and he had a Masonic hand pose going while he was while he was training a client. I'm like, what? 
And then I go inside and I see this woman talking to somebody, talking to a potential customer, and she's doing a free Masonic hand pose. Oh, the way some people drive, man. Man. I reckon, I reckon people, the way they drive, the way they are when they get behind the wheel is a reflection on who they are. And people just, people lose their shit when they drive. They've got no patience, they've got no courtesy, and it's all about, yes, I've got you, and woohoo, I get to toot my horn because you made a mistake, you know? And they're just hypocrites, you know, like Commodores and these great big white four-wheel drive SUV things that have always got their lights on, you know? And it's just, it's just a common thing with me. I look in my rear vision mirror and they're just, they're just constantly, constantly up my ass. You know, you can see it there now. There's a white one just behind. It's funny. It's very ironic. I tell this story. It's a great big four-wheel drive monster. I'm in a car park, so it's cool. But this is what I see in my rear vision mirror constantly. What you see now behind me is these big white four-wheel drive monsters right up my ass, you know, because I'm obeying the rules because I don't want to upset the Freemasons because the Freemasons, oh, us being safe is so, so important to them. And the only thing that can keep us safe is fines, isn't it? We can't keep ourselves safe. No, no, it's safe. No, 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 we need the Freemasons. We need the Freemasons with their rules and their fines. To keep us safe. I'm just wondering, this morning, I was going to tell another story about my, my days in church as a little boy, but I might save that one for another video because it goes to this spiritual battle that's going on. So I've felt my whole life that I've, I've, I'm being held to a different set of standards to, to everyone else. I just feel like um, th there's stories I could tell where just the outcome for me doing, you know, wrong, breaking, breaking the rule of, rules of the world. Um, there's just story after story I can tell when I was at work. I've just experienced, I've just experienced injustice my whole life, you know. And now I'm starting to see why, because this bloke, he doesn't, he doesn't do this. He doesn't do this to anyone else, you know. He only does it. He, he's, I've only seen him approach me in this fashion. And he's got it in for me because that's why he come up to me the second time because he had a smirk on his face. He didn't come in peace, you know. And I'm like, righto, mate, righto. Um, just have to give way to a great big four wheel drive monster with its with its lights on. And it didn't indicate, but that's cool in a park car park, I suppose. But if I didn't indicate in one of these great big four wheel drive monsters with its lights on that are constantly up my ass, I probably would have, would have got a horn. So it's a reflection on how they are. When I drive, I'm completely calm, and I do giggle. I laugh at the way other people conduct themselves and, and all that, but I'm very calm on the road. I'm very, very, um, yes, you go, yes, you go, that's fine. You know, I'm no, I'm no weakling or nothing like that. You know, I, I hold my own on the road. I mean, you've got to be assertive when you drive. You know, I'm assertive and all that, but I, you know, I'm, 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 um, um, uh, courteous. I'm courteous to others, you know, because at the end of the day, we just want to get somewhere else. That's why we're driving, you know, it's not a competition, but it is to these people, you know. But it, it just goes, this, this all, this all goes to this, to this spiritual battle that's going on. And I, I look back, I look back on my whole entire life now. And I, I, I've said in previous videos that there's people in my life, both past and present, who I believe represent my affliction, and that's why they're in my life. And there's and there's been others that I look back on, and I believe they've come into my life, they've come into my life to to um, prevent me from finding the Lord because I'm part of the elect. And and you look at this 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 thing that happened yesterday, where where I where I um, wanted to sin. And it was a premeditated thing. I wanted to sin. And when I prayed, I said to the Lord, I said, I don't know what overcome me. You know, and then I thought straight away, the Lord just goes, Brett, do you know what's going on here, mate? We need to up the ante here, buddy. And this is what's happening this morning. You know, I've, I've, I've got Ephesians six thirteen just absolutely pulsating in my in my ears this morning. It's, it's, it's incredible um, because this has been going on my whole life. And... That woman today who was doing Masonic hand size at this childcare centre, you know, it's Masonic at a childcare centre. You've got to see this four-wheel drive monster book behind me to believe it at the moment. So there's lights on and it's, uh, you must think I'm just obsessed with them, but they, they're just everywhere, these cars. 
But it just goes to show that these people, they control, they control the earth, they control the information flow, they control the hearts, minds, spirits of everybody really on the earth because they, they get you from the from the start, you know, like I can't I can't get to kids and start talking to them about Jesus because it's it's just too complicated for kids, you know. I mean if you how would you do that, you know? And that's where that's where people who are within the body of Christ would have to get together and you know, and start to learn about, well, how do we teach the little ones? But the Freemasons get to them, and they teach them crap, you know? They teach them that man for, um, climbed out of the sea. Um, they, they teach them that the Earth's a globe, that vaccines are good, that women are persecuted by men, um, that all these heroes in the, in the history of the world, like Albert Freemason Stein and William Freemason Spear, and, and all of them, all of, these, all of these people that are held up, Peter Brock, um, Sir Donald Bradman, if you've got the Sir, that's Regal, the aristocracy, that's Switzerland, that's the Pharaoh. You know, they hold all these people up who are of Satan, who are of Satan, they hold them up. I've got a spam call coming through, it's constant at the moment, it's interesting. Um, they, we, we hold all these, we idolise all these Freemasons up and that's what they're teaching them at school. They're just teaching all these things at, all these things at school, which is just lies and idol worship and idol worship of, of the enemy. And then it, it, it just makes me think a little bit further because this is sort of where the story with um, with when I was a little boy at church comes in. So I, I believe I believe that church was deceived and I believe the pastor was a Freemason. I'm not going to go into too much more detail because it's got to do with my family and um, I really want to, I really want to, I, I, I do, I do respect their privacy and I'm going to do it. I've got a four-wheel drive monster behind me with its lights on at the moment. I don't know if you can see it. And it's veering lane to lane. And I'm just doing, because it's right up my ass. it's a 60 zone. So I'm doing about 58 and I'm just keeping pace with the car in the other lane. And it can't pass. And it's just going from side to side. And it's just going absolutely and utterly mental. You'd love to meet these people because it's a reflection of what they're like on the road, and this is exactly what I'm like. You know, if you mess with me, I'll mess with you back, but I'll do it subtly. You know, it's a reflection. It's a reflection of how you how you are. The way the way you are behind the wheel is a reflection on who you are as a human being. But anyway, in this church, um, the church was was deceived, and that's why Matthew 24 24 really rings in my ears this morning because there was people. Well, has been for a week because there was people in that church who were of the elect and they and I believe they were deceived. I'm not saying they're not people of God and they didn't know God, no, no, no. But they were deceived. Because it's easier these days, I think, because we've got the internet. Um, knowledge is increasing. We've got the Apocrypha. You know, it's easier in these days. And I just look back at all of those people in the past who didn't see the end times and didn't see the end coming and they just... They just had to persevere. They just had to persevere on faith alone and the Bible and prayer. Um, man, I, my heart just goes out. My hat goes off to those people. It, it, it really does. It must have been so, so difficult back in those days, you know. But anyway, the, this, this pastor, this pastor of the church who, in my heart of hearts now, I'm there. I believe he was a Freemason. In fact, I'm at a point where I can't possibly see where he can't have been a Freemason. He has to have been a Freemason. He has to be a Freemason. Anyway, he he the, the the way God the way God used Dad in that church it obliterated that church. That church was never the same after it. Everybody left. Everybody left that church. Oh, I'm going the back way this morning. Wyong's hideous now. You can't get through Wyong, and they refuse to do anything about it apart from putting in new traffic lights and new rules and new signs. But they don't make it easy for us to get through Wyong. No, just more rules, more rules. Um, but he, he, um, him and Dad had a real thing, a real thing. I won't go into detail with it because it's, 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 it's between Dad and him. But, but now I come in the name of the Lord, you know, and I, I, I read all these chapters about, you know, the, son, the Father and the Son and all that and the seed, and I just go, whoa, 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 because my Dad's in the elect too, guys, big time. My Dad's in the elect. And um, he, he, now the Son, the Son's come good, and the Son's got all this wisdom, and the Son's not being deceived. But anyway, the, the, this pastor about 12 months ago sent Dad a letter and Dad just refuses to read it. He refuses to read it. Um, but I read it. I can't remember what it said, but I'd like to read it again. Um, but it's basically, it's him holding out the olive branch and he wants to talk to Dad. And this is, 
oh, what, how many years did it have to be? 40, 30, what, what decade? We had 35 years after the church blew up, you know. He hasn't heard boo from this guy. And all of a sudden he wants to, you know, he wants to extend the olive branch and, and talk to Dad, you know. If Freemasons can extend an olive branch, I don't think they can. It's that thing that's on the UN logo with them. But anyway, you know, those two things that go up on the side. Um, but he got this letter and Dad just refuses to read it. But anyway, the Lord, the Lord wants me to go and talk to this man. Um, the Lord's spoken to me and, and I need to go and talk to this man. So I, I, I've spoken to my parents about it, asking for their blessing and they, they, they've said yes, but then they've said, look, we need to think about it. Can we come back to you? I'm like, yes, you know, no problem, you know, and I just wait for them. But anyway, this, this, this all goes, so this is what I say. So the Lord, I'm not making this up. The Lord has spoken to me through many many different ways the Lord's spoken to me and, and, and has said Brett I want you to go and talk to this fella you know because this bloke had an influence on a lot a lot of people um, and he probably still does to this day his son his son is very very successful in the world he owns a business called Attitude T-shirts um, and apparently it was it, it was born because everybody in his childhood told him he had a bad attitude and I was there for his childhood and nobody said any such thing. Um, we never thought he had a bad attitude. He was a sook. He was a sook and he was holier than thou and he um, he had a real entitlement syndrome and now, and now I really understand why. I really understand why, but none of us told him he had a bad attitude. Um, him, and my, him and my brother really, really clashed back in the day, really clashed back in the day. And my brother's delighted, my brother's delighted that I found the Lord and this family's back in our life and the two families are now, it's coming to a head guys. It just feels like, you know, this spiritual battle, this is what I talk about with the with the Freemasons, they're talking with their hand signs and they just sit there by themselves. Like that lady was sitting there by herself, you know, and she's throwing out Freemason hand signs. And I just wonder whether they're drawing on some sort of demonic energy when they do it, you know, because we all know that they do it to communicate with each other. But the Lord's telling me this morning that they are, they are absolutely, they're conjuring up evil energy, evil energy with these, with these hand signs. And, and I, 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 so much to me this morning has become clear with demons and how they manifest after what I experienced yesterday. And you look at it now and you look at the world and you just look at people on the street and just how deep this Freemasonry actually does go on, on the street um, and in our lives. Um, you know, this is a, this is odds education, you know, they're, they're there to, to, to look after our little ones and see them through and educate them and, and, you know, so it's, it's frightening, it's frightening what's going on and right now I would be, I would be at my wits end if I didn't know Jesus, but then again if I didn't know Jesus I wouldn't know all this information, you know, because it's only come because of Jesus and reading the Bible and, and wanting wisdom, searching for wisdom and, and praying and, and just keeping my soul focus, my soul focus I, at all times is truth, um, my, I, I want truth before I want Jesus. Um, that might sound a bit funny to some of you, but I do want truth before I want Jesus. And it's just the fact that Jesus is truth, and that's why I follow Jesus. And praise be to Him. Praise be to Him, because they're two of the thing. They're two of the same thing, you know. So it turns out that it turns out that I wanted truth, and in the end, all I wanted right along was Jesus. Praise be Jesus, man. Oh, I am. I am positively pulsating. So I hope this video makes sense. It's really. Really what I wanted to say, what I wanted to talk about, was just the just, just this spiritual battle that's going on. Um, it's real, it's real, and it's in me, and now, now I've just got to find out how to address it. You know, how does the Lord want me to proceed with this personal trainer? How does the Lord want me to proceed when I see things like that woman, like that woman? Because today all I did was just stare at her hands. Was that enough for the Lord? Um, I believe the Lord would be happy with my works today because that lady was very, very uncomfortable. You know, I, I felt, I made her feel very, very uncomfortable and she stopped doing those hand signs while I was looking at her. Um, so that's a good thing because then she wasn't drawing on energy from these demons. And I did it, I did it, I did it in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. 
and she stopped. She stopped, you know. So I just felt like holding up my iPad and just drawing on that iPad, iPad, Jesus is Lord and he is coming and just showing it to that woman. But I just thought, no, no, I won't do that. I'll pray. I'll pray on it and I'll pray on it to, to the Lord um, about how he wants me to proceed um, with things with things like this. But it's very, very real. Demons are real. Um, the, 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 the spiritual fight is very, very real. Um, being a babe in Christ and and learning all this stuff, I was going to use the word confronting. I don't think it's confronting, but it's it's very very it's different. It's different. Like I, I I bumped into someone I know yesterday, and I I was just I just found something out. I I, I can't remember. It might have been in Enoch. It was something about Enoch, and and I just found something out, and I just wanted to share it, but I can't, because nobody wants to know the truth, so I just can't, that's where this YouTube channel's so good, I just can't share the things that I'm finding out, apart from on YouTube, and that person looked at me, and they said, well, I look so glum, you look like you're, you look like you're really depressed, and I just looked at them, and I said, no, 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 I said, I'm not depressed, I just said, this is far, far more than what I thought it was. It's far more than what I thought it was. This whole walk with the Lord. I, I just, I did not know. I did not know it was this. And the stuff I've learned in the last two months, two weeks, two days, you just go, man, where am I going to be in two days, two weeks, two months time? You just, it's just blowing my mind, the, the, the wisdom that he's giving me. And that, that Bible verse where, where wisdom will increase and, I mean, that, that's all about, to me, that's about your technology and it's about your apocrypha and, and how we can fellowship with each other online, you know. And it's just, it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing for me, but all I want, I'm going to keep going. All I'm going to do is keep going. I've been released from bondage, you know. It's just the Lord... I'm one of the I'm one of the um, children of Israel that's been released from bondage in, you know, from from 400 years, and I'm not one of those silks. I'm not in the wilderness crying, you know, saying, "Lord, why have you forsaken me?" No, no, I'm in the wilderness. I'm in the wilderness, exalting the Lord, absolutely exalting the Lord's name, um, and doing whatever I can to get Jesus front and centre in this world today, because He's the only answer. He's the only truth, and it's He's the only reason why we're here. The only reason why we're here, and man, is that getting clearer by the day as well with this whole spiritual battle thing? It's real. It's really, it's it's real. And you, you read through Enoch, and Enoch just goes. I read Enoch, and I just think, wow, this was written for me. And I think it's true because it was written for the elect. And the elect, we we ask questions because we know the Earth's flat, and we know there's there's no planets. We know that they're just these luminaries that sinned against the Lord, the Watchers, who who committed the gravest, gravest, gravest of sin. So it was written for me. It was written for the elect as a collective. It was written for the entire body of Christ. It was the um, was what was Enoch and ah. Uh, Just waiting for it every day. Every day, I'm turning on mainstream news. I'm looking at YouTube, but I'm just, I'm just waiting for something. Will the Lord instigate it? This is where I don't, because I don't completely understand the Old Testament and how to read it and all that. I don't totally get the prophecy, but that's okay. It's going to come as I pray. Keep reading. It's going to come as I pray because I don't know whether the Lord's going to trigger this or whether it's going to be them. But something's massive coming, and I firmly believe. I firmly, firmly believe. It's going to be, it's going to be from them. They're going to trigger it. They're going to trigger it. And it's going to be, it's going to be flood-like. It's going to be flood-like. And they're going to call it an act of God. Um, so I'm tipping like a tsunami is going to hit New York City, something like that. Um, or it might hit, hit, hit the West Coast with, because it's got, yeah, the West Coast because it's got the, um, the West Coast has got, you know, they've, they've been building people up for decades, for centuries to about the big one about the big one in LA because it's on a fault line and fault lines are a hoax as well tectonic plates are a hoax as well all they are all they are is just a made up lie to make the globe fit into a system that's that it's not the earth's flat it's not a ball so they have to manipulate and this is why they come up with these tectonic plates these are the fault lines of the globe where the globe doesn't work it's like gravity gravity's like their little plug hole where things don't fit and things don't make sense and 
they make you feel like an idiot because you didn't think about gravity, you know, this invisible force that doesn't exist, you know. The only invisible force that does exist is, the, is Christ Jesus, guys, and this is probably part of their helio model. That's just come to me too, that, you know, gravity's probably just them mocking Christ yet again, you know. So, um, yeah, they've been, they've, been, they've been working people up, getting people prepared, um, programming them programming them about this big earthquake that's going to hit that's going to hit off off the off the coast and will be that be the trigger for the tsunami in my heart of hearts that's what i think is coming that's what's going to trigger all this um whether it's the end times or not i don't know but it's going to trigger their new world order because america to get the one world system in america simply has to fall um because the the whole currency within the world is America, you know, here in Australia, our dollar's always worth a certain amount of, of US cents. So when that falls, when that falls, they have to go to a new currency problem action, problem reaction solution, you know, so the problem will be that there's no currency now because America's been obliterated and Babylon's fall and the reaction will be, ah, we don't know what to do. We need a saviour, we need a messiah. You know, enter Barack Obama in Israel, the one world currency, the beast and all that. So, a little bit more detail in this video than what I was, I was thinking. It was just going to be about Masonic hand signs, but it's good. I've got a lot out that I've been thinking about. Um, this spiritual battle's real, guys. The next thing I've got, really got to start praying about is how the Lord, how the Lord, how He just wants me to fight it. How He wants me to fight this spiritual fight. How He wants me to conduct myself. What did He want me to do there today? Because He showed me that lady with those hand signs there today. That was the Lord in His grace just going, Brett, this is what's coming, mate. This is what I need you to see this. And in His grace, because He's answered my prayers in so many other ways and He's revealed my afflictions, I didn't go up there like a raven lunatic whether I just looked at her, you know, looked at her hands, made myself known, looked at her and just said in my eyes, just said to that lady in my eyes, I am of the body of Christ and I can see what you're doing, sister. So, so that's what today was. That's what today, that's what this whole thing is with this guy in the gym. It's just the Lord preparing me, preparing me for the journey ahead, the battle ahead. I will pray. I will continue to read. That's the big question now. How do I conduct myself? How do I conduct myself in these, in these encounters in the future? Because I just see it and see it and see it now. I saw a jeweler. Don't know if I mentioned this in this video yet, but I saw a jeweler. You know, they sell jewelry. She's serving a customer. She's serving a customer. Oh, there goes the police. I'm really scared. I know, Ryan, you said don't be, but I'm really scared about the police now because... And he's stopping, and I'm just going to wait here. Oh, where's he going? Anyway, I might finish this video here because there's a policeman here. Praise be to Jesus, guys. Praise be to Jesus. All the glory goes to Jesus. And I'm going to go and see what happened, what's happening with this policeman. The purple beast because he stopped right out in front of my house.